all your horses are securely tied. Running into a wandering off during service. I know it's a little tough getting here without much snow in front of place. But uh, now that your horses are tied, we're going to have some old fashioned Christmas. We are going to. There was a mix up in one of the newspapers, so we may have some people coming late. But uh, if they do, we'll just let them on in. First of all, there's uh, some acknowledgments I want. First of all, I'm Bill Marvin, ex president of the McElroy Area Historical Society, and I've uh, been doing these uh, services on Christmas, 1890s services, for a long time now. But you don't look about you. Look at the beauty of this place. Everything is decorated the way it would have been in the 1890s. And Angie, where are you? Right here, sir. Angie Gorsuch, Angie Timmons. Where's Leanne? Leanne, you were uh, what, 12 years old? I don't know what you were involved. Uh, Sherwin Meter, they're the ones who uh, decorated the Christmas tree. Yeah, they were the ones who decorated it. They were the ones who decorated this and made this a beautiful, beautiful chapel than it is today. So let's. <laughs> The uh, other thing I'd like to do is, uh, for years, we've had a person play the piano for this service. It's also the person who rebuilt and resurrected that piano and made it playable again. And this year she had some surgery on her hands and wrists and, and is not able to play this year. And uh, she's always been there for us. Uh, Robin Nelson, I'd like to acknowledge Robin. <laughs> and then at the uh, end of the service, we'll get here from Reed Nelson, who's been a guy who's been there for me multiple, multiple occasions. <coughs> and it's always nice to have Reed join us for the service. So I'd like to thank him. The, uh, we, <laughs> when Robin called me a while back and said, I'm not going to play this year. She went searching and I went searching and uh, we found a piano player who was going to play for us up until a few days ago when she was called away for funeral. So one of the people that we had thought of earlier but was unavailable suddenly became available and Matt Quick is going to join us today. First time Matt has ever played a 1916 piano in a preaching church. <laughs> And as always, the, the mad poker, the man who blows his horn for God all the time, Les Jackson. Les, thank you for coming. <laughs> you, you have a plethora of horns. I don't think. When I was getting ready to do this, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I said, I wonder if I would do something different this year. Try to do something different. And he looked at me kind of odd and he said, Why wouldn't you want to do anything different? He said, For 2,000 years, people have been trying to deny or change the Christmas story. They've been trying to say it never happened. The virgin can't give birth, and on and on and on and on. He said, But we know it did. Why in the world would you want to change? Anything. And you know, I thought about it for a minute and I thought, you know what? We're going to do the Christmas story. Same way we've done it in the past. We read some scriptures, we'll sing some carols, we'll listen to the music, we'll have prayer. The way they did it many, many years ago. You have to remember this all started thousands of years ago. In the Old Testament, with the prophets, with the prophets who foresaw all of this, they said there would be a little town called Bethlehem where a leader would be born. They said there would be a virgin birth thousands of years ago. And now, 2,000 years later, we celebrate that birth. Join me for a moment of prayer. 
Our Heavenly Father, what a gift. What a gift you've given us with your Son. Let us praise him today. Knowing the whole story about his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection. But let us today celebrate his birth. The greatest gift ever given to the world. In his name we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We start off with the book of Micah. Micah was never one of the major prophets. But Micah, in a message from the Lord, was told, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will be ruler over Israel. Those origins are from old, from ancient times. That was the prophet, Micah. When Herod was questioning the birth of a Messiah, this is what he was told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi, wise men from the east, came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is this one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was extremely disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all of the chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. And therein, all those years later, they repeated the prophecy. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Let's sing the first two verses of a little town of Bethlehem. <laughs> And he didn't 
have a clue. Hear what the scriptures say. Reading from Matthew, first chapter, 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to marry Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to any public ridicule, he had a mind to divorce her. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, and he said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what is conceived is her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give a birth to a son, and you are given him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from sins. All of this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary as his wife, and he had no union with her until after she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Let us sing the first and second verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Greetings. 
you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled in his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be? Mary said. Since I am a virgin, she asked the angel. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born to you will be called the Son of God. Please join in the singing of what God is this. All three verses. Augustus issued a decree that a 
census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling claws, and she placed him in a barn in the main, because there was no room year but sing all the verses of the in the manger. <laughs> interesting. They could have said what so many people say, they add, there's no way. No way. Couldn't happen. That's just the stuff. Don't worry about it. But they did. They left everything and they crossed country to worship of David. Join me as we sing all verses of these three kings, but we'll only sing the refrain after verses one and five.
begins to spread from those educated Medra who came to worship him. From the very most educated to probably the least educated, a group of shepherds. A group of shepherds living in the hills with their sheep. What's about to happen to them is going to scare them to death. Because they don't understand what has happened yet. The glory of the Lord. We pick the story up Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. As they hurried off, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured all of these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which was just as they had been told by the angel. Join me in the singing of joy to the world.
And the shepherds went out and they spread the word. And the word spread all the world that a Savior had been born. I'm not sure, but I've heard that they did not have cell phones back then. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have the internet. They didn't know. They didn't know. To go out, everyone they saw, and praise God. Praise God for this gift of his son to save us eventually. From our sins. We're dying on a cross for us to save us from our sins. There's no other way to spread the word but to tell each other. I wonder how we do today. How do we do today when it comes to spreading the Christmas story? Do we tell the story? The story was meant to be stole told. The way a group of six immigrant German families who built this church told it in the 1890s. They didn't speak a word of English in this church until the 1930s. My mother was German, just missed being born in Germany by a couple of years. Her Christmas carol I ever heard was O Tannenbaum, O Tannenbaum, Stile Genach, Heile Genach. They worship. They worship the Son of God in their own simple, simple way, in this simple structure. In this simple structure. If you look about you, you can see the story of the structure on the way out, the two doors hanging on the wall up there. Those are the original doors. Those are the original doors from when this church was built from when it was built for seven decades. Those immigrants, their families, friends, opened those doors and walked in here to worship. To worship Jesus Christ with the greatest gift the world has ever known. So as we go out today, it's our turn. It's our turn spread the gospel, to spread it just as it happened, not some far-fetched story, but just as it happened. It'll never change. It'll never change. As long as this chapel is here, we'll do this sometime in December, so people can get a feel for what it was like. I'd like you now to join me and just singing of silent night. Holy night. <laughs>
over the ice house. But before we go, I'd like my good friend Reed Nelson to come up and close us with prayer. <laughs> Gracious Heavenly Father, we are truly blessed today to have the privilege that people from many ages wish that they could have, to understand the prophecies that were told. And yet, Lord, we have now, and it was read to us, the New Testament, which pieces together many of these Old Testament prophecies that helps us to understand that God came in human flesh. Your word says that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. And oh, how we need redemption. We thank you that Jesus came to be the Savior of the world. Thank you that he was born in Bethlehem as was prophesied. And we're thankful, we are thankful for Joseph and Mary all that you allowed them to do, to see that Jesus was raised in a proper way. We thank you, Lord, to know that he came to die. We've heard of this, this day, Lord, as we've listened to this service. And we are grateful for that privilege to know that Jesus came to save sinners. We know now the way, the truth, and the life. May we make application as was stressed here today. May we vocalize to others, especially at this Christmas season, the Christmas story, the true story of the Messiah coming for our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for those that have put work into this service, food that has been prepared, and we just pray that you might bless the time together as we fellowship and visit with our friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you all for coming. We have just had a beautiful day. I can't remember anything. What year was it that it was about six below? And the wind was going this way, and so was our tree. One day in the morning, when you rise, do not grab the back of the pews. They are not anchored to the floor. And I would hate to have anybody go down. So please join us for some refreshments. Thank you for coming. And stay as long as you'd like to take pictures as well. Tell your friends about that. Tell your friends about that.